So if you can, let's start at the outside. Walk us through the truck itself and tell us, you know, as far as what have you done to the truck? Is there anything special about the paint? I mean, anything you want to tell us about the truck itself? Pretend I'm at a car show and I know nothing. Tell me about your truck. Well, it's a 94 Silverado that I updated the, actually updated the front end to the composite headlights. It had the work truck grill on it originally. And I didn't really care for the work truck front end. I do have a friend that is in the show scene that has a work truck front end and it looks phenomenal on his. I just didn't care for it for mine. Sure. And then we had, our, I had a three quarter chassis from the firewall back built by uh, Jake and the guys at Fat Fabs in Choctaw, Oklahoma. So it is fully body, body dropped, two by four square frame tubing front to back. I decided I wanted to go with a more traditional two tone so, and I had seen this brown on a Toyota Tundra and absolutely fell in love with it. It was an overcast day. The truck I thought was black and the light came out from behind the clouds and just absolutely popped the entire truck back brown. And so I literally whipped a U-turn and went to O'Reilly's <laughs> and found the paint code for that year model Tundra. And that was the two-tone. And when I took it to the painter Charles and told him what I wanted to do, he was like, are you really sure you want to paint this black and brown? And I was like, I think it's going to work. And uh, after we got done painting, he got done painting it. And he was like, I think you were right, it works. It's an absolute gorgeous vehicle. And then well, I wanna, I know Ernie's over there on cam duty right now. I wanna walk to the bed because the detail and work that you put into the bed is just as the same caliber as what we see here on the outside of the vehicle. Yeah, uh, I looked at a couple of uh, companies as far as wood bed floors. And then I realized it's like, you know, I'd work with a router every day. So why don't I just make my own bed floor? So. I went down to Lowe's and picked out a couple of chunks of uh, cedar and got to cutting and routering and staining. And that's what it ended up with. So you built this bed floor. This isn't yeah. a bought kit. This is no. something you built by hand and put into the truck. No, it has the stock metal bed floor underneath the bed. And then I just put in one by square tubing and then drilled and tapped where all the stainless holders are. And then those Route 66 knobs that you see in the corner, the two rear corners of the bed will actually lift out so you can access the excess power batteries, the wire controller, okay. or the air ride uh, compressors, the uh, airlift 3H manifold, or the uh, flow air ride tank, or the fuel cell is all underneath the bed on the uh, either side. The uh, someone here asked me a question. Um, bagged t on tanks, air? Yeah, it's, it's full air ride, so okay. it's bagged. So full air ride suspension and full air ride suspension and system on this. Yeah, and then it's a uh, body drop. So the body is actually, the body and the frame hit the ground at the same time. Okay. So when you lay the truck out, it fully lays out. So it fully yeah, lays out all yeah, the way down. Yeah, there's nothing passing underneath this thing. It, I don't have to have a parking brake anymore because it is its own <laughs> parking brake. You know, Bobby there, hope that, yes, it is bagged. Bobby, I saw you ask that question after someone else had asked us. So I wanted to throw that up there. Uh, and you said it's error? Yes, yes, it's airlift. Airlift, okay. Yeah, our buddies at airlift. Yes, sir. So, gorgeous back. You handmade the bed yourself. Which yes, is, sir. Which is just amazing. The vehicle itself inside, you wanted to keep it as stock as possible, did you not? There's a gentleman in the scene uh, named Del Yushenko who builds uh, C10s, and actually he'll build just about anything. But he really likes to keep it original and almost where you can't tell that the modifications have been there. It's almost like a, an upfit OEM type setup. And so I kind of decided that I, I really like that because a lot of people will just, their eyes will just glaze over the, uh, the stuff that you've done and not realize that it's been done. Right. And I really thought that was a cool deal. So I started, when I started doing the interior on this, the dash came out in about 300 pieces. That was the one thing Arizona did claim. Was the dash. Was the light gray dash in the interior. It ate it right up. So I went up to uh, Tulsa and LKQ and ended up pulling in a fresh dash. Pull and apart. I, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Me and Pull Apart were close there for a while. <laughs> I found a lot of parts for this guy up there. And uh, yeah, I got a fresh dash, all the interior trim, and got it down here and either upholstered it or color matched it and painted it all myself. So regular guy audio just hit a question here. He wants to, so is it C-notched? Yes, it's, it, well, it's a full frame from the firewall and just behind the engine all the way back. It's okay. a all new chassis. 
Okay, so there you go, guys. It's, it is a full frame notch. If you have any other questions, man, throw them up here. I'll try to look at the pad and get them, or JW can maybe get uh, Tim's uh, or Ernie's attention on the mic. Let us know. We'll definitely ask these questions. So as I look at the interior, the doors are, I mean, just, just clean. I know they're not stock, but they look stock. Yeah, I, that's, that was that kind of the thing. I wanted it to look OEM, but a little bit nicer materials. You know, they're all vinyl wrapped. Uh, the insert in the top of the door is actually an older Ford material, strangely okay. enough, that was used in the inserts on some of their old uh, full-size Ranger trucks. And I just really like that embossed look, so I've integrated that in there. So my Ford Camaro Chevy Mustang's kind of happening right here. Kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is this has got this has got a little bit of everything in it. So uh, and I it's funny. Move... Th it the only way to make these doors look good in my mind is if you make it look like it has a speaker. But if you actually reach down and tap tap that grill cloth, that's just. ABS plastic behind it. There's there's, there. there's no there's no speaker in the door at all. So I noticed Tim was or not Tim. I noticed Ernie was getting it. I'm so used to you being the camera guy. I can't help myself. <laughs> I noticed that Ernie got already a shot down there. So I noticed you have kick panels in here. So the door speaker is just a faux. It's just it's there just, for looks. It's one of those things that if you didn't have the look of a speaker down there, I could not make that door look right to my eye. Sure. I kept looking at it, and I've I, this is probably the third iteration of door panels that I've had in this truck, and this is the one that I came up with. To me, was the most pleasing to my eye. Well, I got to tell you, when you talk about, you know, the look you're going for, which is that that kind of like OE look, but kind of an up fit. So it's still, though, I know that's not the stock door panel. I, I've, in the day, I've worked on enough of these trucks to know that, mm -hmm. but that looks like a, a new generation version of what would be a stock panel in this vehicle. I mean, you pulled it off. I, I have to say, it's very tastefully done and well executed because I know it's not stock, but I don't care. It feels like it's stock, but better. Oh, thank you. That's 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 really what I was going for on this. Now I noticed when you say you wanted to keep the whole look and everything. When I'm going to the dash, did that include all the way down to keeping the old Viper LED red security light right there on the dash? This actually <laughs> still has that alarm on it, and it still works. It's and it's remote start, keyless entry, and it works perfectly and flawlessly, just like the day it was installed. Now, as far as uh, audio system in here, obviously we saw the kick panels. I can tell that's Q class components. Yep. They're the QSS six and a half. So they're okay. actually the smaller ones. Okay. And the those are actually Q Forms kick panels. Oh. From that used to be Audio Innovations right on the other side of town, and that's actually where I started my career in car audio. That's just was, what I was going to ask you. Is you used to work at Q Forms? I worked or? at I worked at Q Logic and AI for three and a half years, and I worked in just about every every department that that company had. But uh, Jason, who actually is the gentleman who now owns the rights to the Q-Forms, um, got me hooked up on a set of those. So Because I always, I never had a vehicle when I worked at AI right. that I could use the Q-Kick panels in. And I, when I got this truck, I was like, I'm going to hunt a set of those down. And Jason Owens has resurrected the brand and I was able to get a hold of a set of those from him. So Moth or B-17 asks, is that a kicker head unit? And the answer is, yeah, that's a kicker marine source unit. Every single audio component in this is made by us. It's a KMC4 head unit. There's two IQ1005s powering the entire system. The QSS components and the kick panels. KS 4x6s in the stock locations in the dash. And then behind the seat, we actually have a pair just for the time being. I haven't decided on what my final enclosure and sub combination is going to be in this particular truck. So for the time being, we wanted to use this at a couple of events and show the capabilities of our prefab enclosures. Right. So it has a couple of the Comp RT with the passive radiators, truck boxes, a pair of tens behind the seat. So what we need to do, if we can, get Ernie. Can we tilt the seat forward and get a look at the back? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. So we're going to make Ernie do some work. The tens or the twelves, you Those said. Those are the tens. So a pair of tens. Yep. Compart two loaded enclosures. One and of then, them. One of them is running off each of the sub channels on the one thousand five. Yeah, I did. Yeah, so just what I was going to ask you. So you're using a, an IQ one thousand five mm -hmm. to run the entire vehicle. Yes, sir. No, I have two one thousand. Oh, two one thousand five. Yeah, I have four channels on one of the one thousand fives bridge to the QS mids, and then the other four channels on the second. 1005 are running the dash 4x6s and the tweeters and the kick panels.